Hi, I'm Shannon Henry, an Applications Engineer here at EMA Design Automation. Now that you have completed your schematic design and are ready to begin the PCB layout process, you might be wondering where to begin. Let's start with the PCB stack up. The stack up is the composition and layering order of the materials used in the PCB. When determining the PCB stack up, two factors need to be considered, design constraints and cost. Design constraints define the performance of the electrical attributes and control factors like material quality and layer count. The key to creating the best PCB stack up for your project is creating a balance between cost and design. To create this balance, let's take a look at additional costs of creating a PCB stack up. The first item to consider is the cost of copper thickness. Thinner copper allows for finer pitch traces and more routes per layer. Thicker copper allows for higher current carrying capacity at reduced trace widths. Half ounce and one ounce are most common and should be stocked. While the cost increases with the weight of copper, availability also needs to be considered. Copper outside the standard thickness range may need to be special ordered, costing additional time and money. Be sure to check with your fabrication house for what copper is stocked. Side note, when you're determining your stack up, keep in mind the conversion of copper weight to thickness. The next item to consider is the cost of adding layers. In the fabrication process, the cost of going from a single layer board to a double layer is essentially the same, since additional lamination isn't needed. To create a balanced stack up, layers should be added in pairs. As a rule of thumb, the additional cost of going from a two layer board to a four layer board is 100%, essentially doubling the price. The additional cost of going from a four layer board to a six layer board is 50%. This can be used to estimate additional costs, but for more accurate amounts, especially on multi-layer boards, contact your fabrication house for a quote. In order to keep the layer count low, shrinking traces may be considered for your design. To keep costs low, leave as much space as possible between densely routed traces for the supplier's print and etch process. If the trace widths and spacing fall below the supplier's general capabilities, the supplier may need to impose a 10% or more cost adder to account for any scrapped PCBs during the manufacturing process. Contact your fabrication house for trace width and spacing capabilities and associated costs. The next cost to consider is the material used within your stack up. The most common material used is a glass epoxy known as FR4. And the typical thickness is 0 0.062 inches. There are multiple cost adders when it comes to material. The most common is being material with a higher processing temperature over 130 degrees C. The prices and availability vary, so be sure to check with your fabrication house. Please note that the materials rated for under 130 degrees C's would be viable for single layer boards. It is important to make sure your PCB stack up is balanced. It is essential that materials on each side of the center line match up. A PCB can become warped when mechanical stresses of the manufacturing process are not considered. Mechanical stress can build up when laminating dissimilar layers of copper with various thickness combinations of glass epoxy laminates. Creating a well-balanced PCB stack up will set the foundation for your PCB layout and design. If you have any topics you would like us to discuss, go ahead and add them in the comments below. In the meantime, be on the lookout for more Whiteboard Wednesday sessions from the PCB design experts here at EMA Design Automation.